We need animations. We have to figure out Dave, monsters, and the world objects like the trophy and fire. First, let's change Dave to start on level 2 because that level has a lot of animations going on. Oops, forgot to build first. Okay, so the fire, the water, and the trophy should be playing through some frames. What we need to do is add a game timer that objects can reference to choose the tiles to draw. Let's add the tick timer to the game state. There's a lot of stuff going on in our code, so I'm going to start collapsing everything with the help of Notepad++. Under Update Level, we'll iterate the timer every tick. While I'm here, I think I forgot to make the jetpack timer tick down, so let's take care of that. So under Draw World, we need to update the tile based on the current tick value. We'll add a new function that processes the tile. We'll call it Update Frame. It turns out that all world tiles include at least four frames of animation, and some have five. What we want to do is figure out the number of frames and create a modular ring using the initial tile as the anchor. We'll add the modulus to the base, and that way we always display one of the valid tiles. Oops, forgot to type that parameter. Whoa, that's way off. What did I do wrong? No, that's not right. Oh, I forgot to bring in the clock. Yeah, that should do it. Now everything's animated, but it's way too fast. Instead, we'll divide the clock by some amount. That way the tick won't change until the division reaches the whole number boundary. Now, in this case, it'll only change every five frames. It's slower, but notice that the animation appears kind of wooden. All the tiles are using the exact same frame. Let's add a little bit of noise to the result by offsetting the frame based on the tile's X position. I'll put the input position as a new parameter called a salt. It could really be anything so long as it's always different. Now we have interesting looking animations. We can use this process on all of the other animated tiles in the game. Let's think about Dave now. He has quite a few tiles and not all of them have the same number of frames. Also, Dave doesn't animate while standing still, so we need a separate timer for Dave that only ticks when he's moving. Let's add that timer to the game struct. Now we'll only update that timer when Dave's moving. Dave will only stand still when he has no last direction. If he does, then we'll anchor him to the first tile in the animation sequence and then offset it with the Dave timer. Let's also animate the death explosion. Monsters should get the same treatment. Looks like Dave's animated. Let's move him to the next level.
Plants are animated. Let's try level four. We see the monster is animated too, although it's very subtle. Now let's try out the death animation. Looks good. You know, that black box around the monsters needs to go. We'll take care of that before ending this video. We need to separate out the surface loading from the texture, just like we did with Dave an hour ago. We don't have any masks to work with, so instead we'll just key the monster tiles with the black background. That should do it. And the monsters are now transparent. They also animate on death. Now you may be thinking it's a bug that the spider went into the ground here, but actually he does that too in the original game. I guess they just never fixed it. That's it for now. Next time we'll build out the user interface.